This chart is the reason that AI is not making developers obsolete anytime soon. In fact, it shows how development skills are more valuable than ever. And this is not a phenomena of just one product. It affects every product that gives people who are not developers some degree of ability to code. And the way AI model progress has been plateauing lately suggests this may not change anytime soon, if ever. Anyone who's not a developer, but has used tools like Bolt or Cursor or V0 to build basic applications from prompts, know all too well the pit of death that you eventually always fall into. Things start fast and awesome. The basic scaffold of your page or your site, or even some of the basic functionality comes in seconds. But then you start prompting more and more, and you start to struggle more in getting what you want out of it. As the application gets more complex, the behaviors you're looking for don't seem to come out quite as easily. And then eventually, some prompt you use breaks everything. Nothing works, and no matter what you try, the AI cannot get out of this corner. That's the pit of death, and I've seen it happen over and over and over. Some esoteric bug is just too challenging for the LLM to solve on its own, and then that's it, your app is done. If you find yourself lucky enough to not land at a pit of death, you'll probably hit a plateau of death instead. Where again, after a certain number of prompts, you just don't seem to be able to make progress anymore. There's truly only one fix for these situations. And that is you gotta roll up your sleeves and get in the code and fix whatever the AI couldn't. Whether that means solving some very esoteric bug or implementing some features so that the AI can continue off of your implementation, there's always a point where the human is needed. Even if the models got 10X better, I don't think you'll actually offset the development need by that much. The reality is LLMs are good at code generation, but code generation and writing is only one part of many of software developments. And in my experience, when an engineer comes in to unblock the AI, the next pit of death is just right around the corner. And as the application gets more complex, you need the developer intervention more and more in shorter and shorter intervals. Eventually what ends up happening is you go from products that don't require any development to ultimately exporting that code and needing developers to fully take it over. And now the developers use different tools that are similar, but more focused on code editing. And that's not to say that the tools that didn't require development in the beginning aren't useful. They actually can be incredibly useful for things like prototyping, making simple internal tools, and micro applications like a pricing calculator. Now, the big question is how do you use these things to make your lives better as an engineer, designer, product manager, marketer, whatever your role is. I think there's a few heavily overlooked use cases that you could adopt in your workflows now to make your life a lot better by using these tools and leaning into where they're going. As an engineer myself, the two things that drive me the most insane are poorly written specifications, where we didn't fully understand the problem and what really is needed to solve it, and ever-changing requirements, where it turns out our original guesses were wrong, customers and feedback told us different things, and now halfway through building the thing, we're changing how we're doing it and everything's becoming a mess. In my experience, you have to get hands-on with an application to really know how it needs to be used. Even better, get it in real users' hands, even if it's not fully functional, just having users go through the actual flows and testing the things that looked good in wireframes and designs, but maybe actually don't feel right in practice, can really help improve your product UX. But if you have to build the whole thing before you learn that, that's wildly inefficient and can lead to very messy code bases. Alternatively, with these rapid prototyping AI tools, we can iterate before we actually commit to building the full thing. We can try out the flows even if all functionality is not there. If we're lucky, we can even get direct user feedback in small ways and learn as much as possible early before we then commit to a finalized spec and building the real full application. But there's other implications I believe coming soon too. While I don't think programming is going away at all, I think it will change. I think every year we're gonna see a major reduction in actually handwritten CSS code. The same way you don't handwrite a PDF, you export it from a tool. Design and design to code tools are becoming so good that they can generate CSS for you, shockingly close to how you would have written it yourself. In doing that, we can stay exactly true to the original design spec and avoid a lot of redlining and back and forth to make this look correct. But I don't think it needs to stop there. I think looking to the future, the big question is, how do we get more tedious development off of our plates so that developers don't need to update colors, add a simple section, modify text, tweak some logic. If marketing or product or design needs small changes, how can we give the tooling like they'd have for a fresh new app with something like Bolts, but compatible with a real application with real users and real developers that work on it daily? Luckily, I work on a team that built one of these products, so I can just show you what's coming soon, specifically around how AI could better fold into full team workflows and automate a lot more than just an initial prototype creation. The first interesting one is something called CodeSync. This is where you can not just convert a design to code with AI, but you can then modify the code. And when the design updates again, there's a link back to the code. So the code gets granularly updated with just the design change 
without developers having to do that by hand at all. So let's say AI converted the design to code, you added all kinds of logic and modifications. Now the design has new colors, new buttons, modified text, and tweak styles. With code sync, you can just push the changes right back to your code base with the most granular update possible and review and merge it. This is currently in private beta and we're hoping to roll it out soon. Another interesting and under-leveraged approach that already exists today is using a deeply AI integrated CMS. So in the case of Builder, what you can do is section off parts of your site or app and decide what regions can be controlled by the CMS. These regions can be assigned to specific teams, like the homepage body goes to the marketing team, a hero section goes to a merchandising team, etc. And then you can use generative AI just like you would with Bolt, Cursor, Zero, or whatever, but the updates go directly to the site or app published over an API. Think of it as like Bolt embedded in your site and app with whatever rules and restrictions you want around it. What that unlocks is not just crazy generative AI use cases within your live sites and apps, but it opens up two other really interesting use cases. The first one is integrating agents into this AI CMS structure. One use case we're exploring is being able to have like a Slack bot, where you might have a conversation about what you'd like to change in your homepage or ideas on things you could do differently. And you just tag the builder agent in Slack and it'll read the conversation, apply the suggestions as like a five or 10% test, and then come back a week later and let you know how that test performed. In this world for those self-contained regions that are probably more marketing focused and things you don't really need or want to have in code anyway, the agent could just make those updates end to end autonomously and do the tedious work and just let you know what the results are each time. We could even take that one step further and let the AI auto optimize things. So in a CMS like Builder, where all content is also tied to analytics, when you produce content through the CMS, the AI agent can automatically start creating A-B test variations, leveraging context it already knows about your business, and finding what variant converts best and scaling that up to 100% of traffic completely autonomously. It could also take your audiences and create personalized versions of content for each audience and play with the knobs to make sure every piece of content is as highly converting as possible in a 100% automatic way. And if you take that one step further, you can even see we're not that far away from a world where we can do one-to-one -one personalization, where the AI is generating parts of the user journey in real time as they're browsing. So as you browse the Cider app, or I do, we could see completely different flows optimized for exactly us, generated by LLMs in real time. This one's probably the furthest because we have to worry about cost and latency, but as more and more LLM optimized hardware comes out, and we're seeing up to 5x gains in speed and efficiency of inference, this might not actually be that far away. So while I don't think everyone will be a developer overnight because of AI, and I do think the more you have development skills, the more you can use the AI to generate code, unblock yourself, and do incredible things, I think the biggest unlock that's coming is better connecting the AI tools with your existing teams and workflows to be able to build and iterate on real applications faster than traditional methods while maximizing the skills of everyone. And we all build better products faster together and focus on our unique skills and creativity and less of redundant menial work.